This video is about using synthetic division to divide polynomials. Here's our example, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3 over x minus 1. We could perform this division using long division, where we'll set up the numerator as the dividend inside and the denominator is the divisor outside. A reminder about how we set up long division with polynomials, we need to, or at least my preferred method is that I organize the dividend so that I have a spot for every term in decreasing order, starting with my highest exponent all the way down. That's why I have this 0x, because our dividend has x to the third, x to the second. It looks like we're missing a term that has x to the first power, and that's why I have the placeholder 0x, and then the plus 3. And doing long division requires us to start with this first term in the divisor and divide it out or think what times this x will equal each of these terms in the dividend. So let's go through the steps. First with the x times what equals x cubed, we get x squared. And I like to keep all of my like terms organized in columns. So x squared is right above the negative 2x squared. And once we have that first answer, we're multiplying back down to both of these terms in the divisor. It's really the first time in this problem that I care about this negative 1 that's here in the divisor. Multiply back down, we have x cubed minus x squared. The next operation is a subtract, but I always like to flip signs and add. It just keeps me on the right path with my signs. So flip signs and add. Down this column we have negative x squared and I'm bringing down 0x. Next round is this x times what equals negative x squared. So we have a result of negative x in the quotient. Multiply back down, negative x squared, and the negative x times negative 1 is a positive x. A subtract, so I'll do flip signs and add. We always want to see those terms cancel. And 0x with negative x, negative x. Bring down the last term, plus 3. And our last round, x times what equals negative x. Well, that's just negative 1. And multiply back down do the flip signs and add, and down here we have our remainder of 2. So we perform this division using long division. There are some things that we can trim out of the process to try to keep it a shorter division. For example, I have x squares all in this column, and x cubes in this column, and x to the first power in this column. A lot of rewriting of x's when I know, just based on where they are, what the degree of the x is, what the exponent is. So we could do something maybe there, and also there was a lot of flip signs and add. Maybe could we just flip signs once in the problem and get that over with. So a couple of those things we address with synthetic division. Before we look at this problem using synthetic division, let's just jot down quickly some of our key expressions here. So we have the remainder down here is the 2. Our answer is our quotient up top here. The setup with synthetic division we won't write x's at all. We will just write coefficients. So in my dividend, I'm just writing the coefficients. I still have to be concerned about having a spot for every term in descending order. So I have coefficient 1 from the x cubed. I have coefficient negative 2 from negative 2x squared. Not having an x term, I have a 0 for the 0x. And lastly, the positive 3. The divisor, instead of using x minus 1, we actually use the 0 of this factor. So basically, you take this expression and set it equal to 0 and solve, or think about what number in place of x would make this expression equal to 0. It would be a positive 1. So synthetic division has us divide by the zeros instead of this fraction or this long division setup where we are dividing by the factor x minus 1. Now let's get into the steps of synthetic division. The first number here, we always just bring it right down. Then as we move through this division problem, we take this number that's down low and multiply it to go back up. And every time we multiply, we're multiplying by our 0, by this number in the box. So multiply by 1, jot that down. And then we're going to add down the column, negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. And we'll do that until we get to the end of the line. So multiply up. Add back down. Multiply up and add back down. This last number right here, let's box that off because that's our remainder. We can see it matches up, remainder 2. These numbers here correspond to the coefficients of our quotient. The constant is here on the right, negative 1. And then we're in increasing order, so there's negative 1x 
and positive 1x squared. And of course, we could leave those coefficients of 1 off and see our quotient is x squared minus x minus 1. Same quotient that we got up here. So those are the steps through synthetic division. Let's go through another example. 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 4x divided by x plus 2. Synthetic division, so for our divisor, we're using not the factor, but the 0, negative 2. And we'll set up our dividend using just the coefficients. And we have to make sure that we have all of our terms in descending order. So positive 2, then negative 7, 4 from the 4x. And we have to have a column for a constant. If we don't have one, like in this example, we'll put in a 0 for the placeholder. Now let's go through synthetic division. We'll bring down that first digit 2, multiply back up. Each multiply is by this number, negative 2. Add back down, negative 11. Multiply back up, add down, and so on. There's our remainder, negative 52. And these numbers are the coefficients of our quotient, 2x squared minus 11x plus 26. Now when you think of dividing polynomials, especially when you would have to do them using long division, you might not have ever really gotten the good sense of when we would be interested in doing division. You spend a whole lot of time learning factoring, you do that a whole lot, but remember that dividing is the opposite of multiplying, and when you factor, you know you can multiply those factors to get your original expression, so in a way, factoring and dividing are both the same, that they undo multiplication. So as you get to polynomials that are more complicated, that you don't know how to factor, we can always go back to the idea that if I can see how to divide, I'm accomplishing the same thing, I'm finding factors. But there is one thing in this example that stops us from saying that x plus 2 is a factor of 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 4x. And that is that when we did the division, we had a remainder. The only time we can say we have found a factor is when the remainder is 0. And if you think about number examples, that makes sense. The number 12 has factors 2, 3, 4, 6, 1, and 12, because 12 divided by each of those numbers gives us no remainder. So no remainder is when we have found a factor. So let's take this for a next example. x to the fourth minus 25x squared minus 60x minus 36. And I'd like you to factor this polynomial. Most of the factoring techniques that we learn would not apply to what we have here. It's not a trinomial, it's not a binomial. When I see four terms, I usually try factor by grouping, but that would not work in this case. So instead, we're going to try to factor by trying division over and over again. And when it comes to division, if we can divide and have no remainder, it means we have a factor. I have to decide what should I try to divide this polynomial by. I know I want to start with some binomial, x plus a number or minus a number. We have some rules out there that help us narrow it down and, and come up with good things to try. One that's a quick and easy one to use is the rational zeros theorem, which says that basically if we start with a term that has a coefficient of 1, then the only numbers that we would see showing up in factors would also be factors of this number. I'm using the rule kind of loosely, but we actually end up with other techniques we can use that are much more handy, and graphing is one of those that we go to. So for this example, I'm going to first try dividing by x plus 1. So I'm doing this because I want to give you another example of how synthetic division works, but I'm also moving towards this idea that to find factors of a polynomial, I can try division. And if I accomplish division and get a remainder of 0, it means I just found a factor. So set up this synthetic division. The factor x plus 1 will use the 0, negative 1. I'm bringing down the coefficients and still cautious about having a spot for every term in descending order. So 1x to the 4th, 0x to the 3rd, negative 25x squared, negative 60x, and negative 36. Let's get to the synthetic division. The first number we're always bringing right down. Multiply up, in this case it's multiplied by negative 1. Add down and so on, multiply up, add down like yoga class. Add down, multiply up, add down. Okay, sorry. Remainder, 0. We were hoping to see that. It means 
we have a factor. It means x plus 1 is a factor. These numbers here we know are our coefficients of the quotient. Now I want to keep factoring. I want to find some more factors of this original polynomial. So next let's try dividing by x plus 2. And I could do this process all over again, but it's important for us to know that dividing out the x plus 1 leaving us with this result means I can try divide x plus 2 just from this answer. I'm pulling out more and more factors of this original polynomial. So I don't need to go back to the original every single time. As I find remainders of 0, meaning I just divided out a factor, I can only work, or I can choose to work only with the quotient. And that's what we'll do. So setting up the next synthetic division, we'll use negative 2. We'll go through these steps, bring down that first number, multiply up, add down and multiply up, add down and so on. Remainder 0, great, we have another 0, so another factor, x plus 2. Let's try another one. I could try x plus 3 with what I have left here, but let me stop you because I want you to understand that right here we're down to three coefficients, just three terms. What would these be when we put the variables back in? Well, there's our constant, negative 18. Negative 3 is coefficient of x. Positive 1 is coefficient of x squared. And can we just factor this using some of our old f techniques of factoring trinomials? And we can. A pair of numbers that multiplied together will equal negative 18. Added together will equal negative 3. So negative 6, positive 3. We just found our last two factors. So bringing all four together, we have just factored this polynomial up here. Let's go to one last example, doing this division, x to the fourth minus x to the third over x minus 1. And we've just been talking about a nice, quicker way to do division, synthetic division. But don't forget all the techniques that we have at our disposal. If you could possibly see a way to simplify, thinking division and simplify are the same operation, can we factor and then cancel? Well, from the numerator, we have a GCF x cubed. Factor that out front will leave us with x minus 1. And then we could see some factors that will cancel the x minus 1s and leave us with x to the third. So I would prefer to go that route when I see it. But let's still look at how it would go with synthetic division. Setting up our dividend, well, let's set up the divisor first. x minus 1 is our divisor, so we'll use the 0 of this expression, positive 1. And now our coefficients. x to the 4th, so a positive 1 for x to the 4th, a negative 1 for x to the 3rd, and we still need all the rest in descending order, a 0x squared, a 0x, and a 0 constant. Can't forget any of those. Now let's do the division. Bring down the 1 and multiply back up. It gets pretty quick once we encounter a couple zeros here. And remember what we see here with the answer. This is our remainder of 0. So it confirms that we do have a factor, that x minus 1 is a factor of this binomial x to the 4th minus x to the 3rd. These are our coefficients. This is the constant 0, coefficient of x 0, coefficient of x squared 0, coefficient of x to the 3rd positive 1. And let's just wipe out all these terms that have coefficient of 0, and we're left with x to the third.